Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk about how to use the Teensy Duino 4.0. has a screaming clock speed of 600 megahertz to make a, uh, let's get a good look at that, a uh, really nice audio frequency oscillator. Okay? And um, it is, it's fast enough to really, really uh, do this in real time. And I have a little sketch here, and I'm going to demonstrate on the scope the operation of this uh, Teensy, Duino, du Teensy Duino device and it's uh, I think it's got a lot of potential okay. should be very interesting let's get going here okay. okay so here's my new Teensy Duino project and I just wanted to see um, I wanted to make an audio oscillator and I wanted to see what kind of range I could cover with uh, taking a sample because when I when, the, when I did this sampling um, or this uh, oscillator for high frequencies, and if I wanted to have an input with uh, a potentiometer, it takes a very long time for it to read the potentiometer, so I couldn't do my high frequency stuff. If I wanted to make a real high frequency signal generator, but now I want to make an audio one, and I want it to be, I don't want it to have little disruptions or, or blip, blurps or whatever when it's reading. Uh, the uh, analog input, so I wanted to uh, see how fast I could make an oscillator with reading it every every cycle. Okay, and uh, so I wanted to uh, actually this this is the low end right here. So I was able to twiddle the knob down to um, add enough delay. It's easy to add more delay, so this is one kilohertz. But let's see how far up in frequency we can go. Let me turn this thing back on. Oh, of course, the scope's going to do its thing now. Come on. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to twiddle the knob here. And we'll bring the frequency up. Up, 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 up. To our max that we can do. And let's see what that is. Okay. And our max is, uh, let's see, let me get the cursors on here, right? It's so annoying how it does that. Okay. 20, 28.7 kilohertz. So that's the maximum frequency that I can get when I'm sampling uh, every, every, uh, uh, cycle of the analog output. Okay, and I'm going to make some interesting uh, analog frequent or uh, audio frequency oscillators, so I could uh, do all my tones in a single, single chip, and uh, reprogram it if I need to. But uh, okay, let, let me take a look at the sketch. Okay, I'm going to pull this off of here before we damage something. Okay. Anyway, let's take a look at our... Okay, so, in my other video, I showed... Okay, there's the Teensy Duino pinouts, and I showed how to hook up um, a potentiometer so we can change the frequency. And I talked about... Um, I'll just restate it. The Teensy Duino operates actually at 3.3 volts, and you don't want to put higher voltage than that on it. And so I taking a 3.3 volt signal off of the Teensy Duino on a pin number well, let's see where are we yeah it's uh, this pin right there so basically there's a there's a ground pin right here I believe that one's ground this is the 3.3 volts and then I'm putting the analog signal into pin number 23 okay and so the red, red, green, and blue may not necessarily correspond to what you think they should be, but it just happened to be the order that I stuck them in. Okay. So the the red is actually the analog input. The green is actually the three volts, and the black is is ground. So black is ground on this one. Okay. Again, this is the pin outputs from the Teensy Duino 4.0, right? Teensy Duino 4.0, and um. Let's take a look at the sketch. I'm going to plug this guy because I don't want something to short out while I'm fiddling with stuff. 
Okay, so here is our sketch. And of course, when you upload the TNC Duino, it's always got this little thing here that remind you to push the button. And uh, I just modified one of my other sketches, my three-phase sketch, and so it's got uh, pins set up for uh, two two more outputs, but I'm just using the LED one output, so disregard these. And uh, so on this one, here's our loop. So this is the void setup, setting up the pins. These are our integers that I'm setting up. Of course, I'm only using LED uh, pin 13. And then uh, before I was adding num to the loop for the delay, and uh, I found out that that was not enough when you go down to the audio frequencies. It requires too many clock cycles, so I'm using it as a multiplier in this, this loop. And this is uh, anyway, so that is okay, let, let's go down to the, the loops down here. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm doing an analog read, and this is a very time consuming process, and this is what slows it down from the uh, hundreds of kilohertz or even megahertz that I can operate the uh, the oscillator at down to uh, the low kilohertz range, uh, tens of kilohertz. Okay, so we do the analog read, and then here's a delay loop, and as I mentioned in the other video, I had to do something a little bit more complicated than just add one because the um, the optimizer would would realize that if you're just adding one and you're doing a loop that it could just uh, breeze past this loop oh I'm just gonna take the number of times it's gonna loop times the number here and multiply it because I'm so clever but that's not what I wanted to do so I'm adding actually uh, I from the loop so it, it, it can't figure out can't optimize that out it's a more complicated uh, mathematical process and again, uh, B is the number that I get from the analog read, which is, depends on the potentiometer. When you twiddle the temp potentiometer, it will give you a number between 0 and 1,023. And then uh, instead of adding to it, because I used num to add last time, now I'm going to use it as a multiplier. I'm going to just multiply whatever analog read comes out of here, multiply that, and so we can get a much bigger delay. And you saw that I was able to delay it down to 1 kilohertz by doing that. Okay. And then I write high. So that's one half clock, or one half uh, uh, audio cycle. And then I repeat the thing. Analog read, delay loop, and then write low. And then it loops. And the loop also takes a certain amount of um, uh, clock cycles, but since it's delayed so much, this, this is... Uh, neglectable compared to how big of a delay we have in here. So the uh, the audio cycles do seem pretty symmetric when you look at them. And uh, anyway, that's, that's the end of our sketch, a very simple sketch. And it seems to make a nice audio uh, circuit. Okay. And anyway. Anyway, this is Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.